Hey people, LSM here and it's anniversary time on Crossing Void, which means we got a new event, a new limited character and many rewards. It's also the perfect time to start playing Crossing Void because we finally got a decent free roll that we can do, being a free limited character that we can get. Before uh, the reroll on Crossing Void was something that in my opinion was not worth it because you needed to finish chapter 1 with full stars to not full stars, just finish the chapter to get a tempo and that only works for non-limited characters and let's be honest you don't want to reroll for limited non-limited characters at S Hank. they are not worth your time it was like half an hour to, half an hour to do the reroll and you are only getting a non-limited so not good in my opinion also the chance is kind of low in my opinion so not worth your time but now with anniversary 2 we have a banner here that guarantees a limited rank s character and i want to talk about each one even if my recommendation is monasuna on how they would help a new player and what are they use on the end game it will be a superficial view of the characters so don't expect something too much in depth so let's start. First, we have B Mikoto, Mikoto Summer. Let's get her here. So, Mikoto Summer at the start of the game, in my opinion, she is kind of weak. She has uh, good skills by herself, like a very strong 12 climax point area. Yeah, it's, it's the best non gimmick 12 climax point before AMB buffs and those things. Uh, her skill 1 is decent, not the best 0 skill point away that you can find and her skill 2 is a front state that is 3, climax, uh, three skill points which is kinda hard to find uh, a 3 skill point that is front by herself and for cross she has some area options the problem with Mikoto at the start of the game is that her exclusive talent uh, please, her exclusive talent gives critical hate for everyone in the team and at the start, you don't have enough to crit consistently. So she is basically doing nothing with her exclusive talent. Now, for end game, uh, Summer Mikoto uh, gets up on my opinion of her because of her elemental. You can already crit with your characters. Maybe you can climax spam. The problem that she has for end game is that if you don't get other summer characters, uh, half of her elemental does nothing so the best part of her kit being the skill points that she gives and maybe the cross cross skills boost that she get will not be able to be activated since you don't have the other summer characters at least you can go and get uh, uh, Mikoto Mikoto swing sweet she counts as a swing sweet pair character for uh, Mikoto's elemental but she is kind of weak, so it's not the best thing in the world, in my opinion. But still, she is an okay option that uh, shows up in value after some point in the game where you can start critting. For the next one, we have Kirino Summer. Let's go for her again here. And Kirino Summer for start players, in my opinion. She is one of the best characters that you can get because of her exclusive talent. If you go here, her exclusive talent says that, uh, yeah, don't have it, but her exclusive talent says that when she uses her skill, skills that uses CP or SP, she will give a damage reduction to everyone in the team. And that is very good at the start of the game because at that point in the game your characters can die and if they have some damage reduction that she can give them maybe you can farm some high level stuff without the stats that you should have needing like let's say pandemonium you are at pandemonium level 1 and because of her damage reduction you can also do pandemonium level 2 uh, without building your stats too much so for the stats players in my opinion she is very good now, uh, unlike other characters, I want to talk about the mid game on her. That is basically w where when she gets her elemental, and she kind of have the best value at that point because because her 
Elemental boosts her capabilities of making your team remain alive because she gets a heal every round which helps very well when you are pushing your limits on the game mode to grind better things. Besides that, for an end game, in my opinion, she suffers the same thing as Summer Mikoto because she needs other Summer characters for her Elementium to work, especially that she, her Elementium itself is a Climax Span Elementium, so without Ouroboros and other Summer characters, she doesn't have much going for her on the element side. At least she can use a one time strong elemental, but uh, sorry, climax skill, but that is it. For her skills, she have a standard zero skill points area, a very good climax skill because of this damage here is a split damage, so even against one or two enemies, she isn't missing that much damage. And she have a mid single target skill that is three climax uh, skill points. Uh, we have, I think, well, we only have three of these skills in the game that go to for three skill points at the mid enemy. And that's it for her. Uh, probably the one of the best characters to carry all through progressing in the game. But she loses her value at the high level because you don't need her protection anymore. And at that point, you need to her elemental for better value. Next here, we have Bride Kuryuhime. Eh, just don't. She, for for starting players, you don't want her. She is very bad. Probably the worst character in the game, maybe, that you can get here at least. She is very bad for a starting player. Now, for end game player, she is only useful if you have the impression weapons at high awakening levels because that is what her limit buff is. Basically, she is a kind of a whale character. You don't want her at the start because she's useless and for end game you have better stuff unless you have other things maxed out and those are very expensive to have. So she, in my opinion, is a ignore. Don't use her. If you get her, just throw out the account and get a new one. Next we have Dual Bay Kirito. So, uh, unlike most memes about du Dual Blade Kirito, he is actually very good at the start of the game. Uh, let's go on his skills very uh, right now, because I need to compare him with other non-limited just for the sake of it, since it's important. So if you go here on his skill, he has the standard zero skill point here, he has a climax 10 climax point, I think it's the only one in the game. And she ha he have this skill here, it's a damage split, 3 skill point, so it's a harder skill that don't lose damage when other enemies die. As you can see here, the damage is lower than a normal 3 skill point. If I go on Kojo here real fast, we will see that Kojo have a better multiplier than Kirito. He, he is. So this is a, would be a normal 3 skill point area damage. As you can see, it's harder than Kirito. The thing is that Kirito have better stats and Kojo is the only one with a good 3 skill point area skill that you can find at the non-limited characters. So if you pick the other DPS characters, most of the time this skill that Kirito have is better than them because they mostly have bleed skills, wounds, spell, and other things. Not only that, if an enemy die, this skill becomes even better because it will not, not lose damage and it's top tier on single target, single target situations. So for Kirito Dual Blade, he is a good pick at the start of the game. Now for end game, it's mostly about his elementum that uh, is around killing uh, any version of Asuna and spamming climax skills. So if you don't, if you can't pull that trick with your account at end game, in my opinion, you should skip him. But he's a decent pick for early game. Next, we have Kimonoshana. Kimonoshana yeah, is kind of hard to recommend at the start of the game because her skill set at the start of the game is very slow. 
she needs at least three rounds to build up her gimmick and at that point most of the time you want the battle to be already over for endgame she is very good because of her true damage gimmick and her kit got faster too uh, she can pull some disgusting stuff on some stages she can ignore stage gimmicks so for endgame in my opinion she is a good pick for if you want some generic uses and some niche applications of true damage next we have here summer apple so summer apple is in a hard spot to recommend by herself her skills are terrible you don't want to use those skills most of the time the thing is that her cross skill and her exclusive talent are very strong she is both in your tier and damage just by being alive and she can use any good support in the game in, and since she have a high attack stat they you do big damage numbers so she is a good pair for holo milk support uh, M support so if you think that you like using these supports and like a generic damage buff for your entire team even if her climax skill or skill points basic skill points are not that good you can get here she is quite high in my opinion of, of her to, to the start of the game now for the end game she's mostly used for one round kill teams for stages because she buffs the damage of the entire team and have a very high attack stat and she have her own DD uh, team but that needs two other limited characters being uh, Kirino and Misak uh, Mika Misaka Mikoto a bitch to, be, to form so good pick in my opinion but most on the support side not the DPS side Next we have Maid Kuroko, she, at the start of the game, uh, I don't think that she's that good, she have her uses being a good front DPS character, but her competition is also very strong being Taiga and Holocross skill, but still, she is a very, very good damage character for front if you want to nuke it, you can time her climax well, and at front will have almost no chance of being alive at the end of her turn if you build a team around her. Now for end game, you don't want to use her. And she still is a decent damage dealer for front, but being honest, you don't need her climax after a 4 skill point skill. After the 4 skill point skill, the front enemy will be dead. She can kill the mid enemy, but at that point you could just, just use any area character and get similar results so for her in my opinion she does her, her job but you don't need her job to be done by her she she have other options next we have here summer yukina so summer yukina is strange she have very good skill point uh, skills her climax is useless she have good cross skills and a good talent that's kind of niche because of the con HP condition. For the start of the game, she is a good pick because she has very good skill point skills and this is something that is hard to find on unlimited characters. Most of the time they have a good climax, but uh, you cannot have a good skill point kit. So very good for the start of the game. Just be aware that using her skill 1 can make her kill herself because she loses HP, so sometimes you need to skip that on her. For endgame, you probably are not using her. Don't get me wrong, her cross with Milk is something that is absurd, one of the best cross skills in the entire game, but most of the time you can do a similar job with other characters. Still, so it's a good use for on her, because farming in this game is almost everything, and this cross skill will probably one hit everything that you can find in the game. So if you value that, even if she doesn't have use with her climax and her exclusive kind of become useless because of the HP condition, she is a good one turn kill if you want one. 
Naoki Monasuna, she is the best character in the game, her skills are amazing, she have two climax skills that are amazing, her cross skills are amazing, and her exclusive talent is broken for every game mode that is important. She is also farmable later, but I am not talking about farmables here, because that shouldn't influence some, someone that will, will be starting, since you want the early game, which is more important for your progression. So, she is the best character in the game, okay? I don't want to talk too much about her, I have a video on her. Best character in the game, pick her if you want a good character. Next, we have Tenshi Yuki. She is terrible, okay? For early game, she doesn't have good skills. Her climax takes too much time to set up. You need to round 3 for her climax to be quote unquote good to use. Her cross skill with Asuna is okay. And that's it, it's the only good, good skill point skill that she has. Her talent is also good, but her entire kit for new players is terrible. She is made to be a spammer of her climax skills and need at least awaken tree, so it's kind of expensive to build her. And just like that, for end game, her use is climax spam and needs awaken tree, so you don't want her if you can't pay for her. So skip her, don't want her because her skill kit is terrible for early game players and end game she doesn't have a use without awaken tree. Next we have butterfly. So butterfly is kind of a support character that can do some good amount of DPS because of her high attack. And in my opinion she is a good pick to the start of the game. We can see here that she doesn't have a damage skill by herself outside her climax. But she has two good cross skills, this one being one of the best 5 skill points that you can find at early game, and this being a decent mid damage. Uh, she is also good on story mode for your progression because of her exclusive talent, where she gives 2 climax points and a damage boost after anyone in your team defeats an enemy. So what you can do is that you can focus a single target with her team, Kill the, let's say, the mid enemy, right after that you have a single target climaxer to end another enemy. So you can do those type of things with her, which in my opinion kind of helps with some uh, stages. And it's a good niche option to have. But still, she has the best purify in the game for those uh, gimmicky stages that you can find on Star mode, so that's also good. And her risk point is a boost to, for your entire team which can be used at all. Now for end game, she is solid. Her elementum made that her climax uh, could be used more frequently with cost reduction. She got a buff for her skill 2. Now it's a very strong uh, damage booster for your entire team. Her talent kind of gets useless because most of the time you are killing every enemy at the same time, or you are on a mode that doesn't have any enemy that can die. But she's still solid in my opinion for endgame. Just shine more at the start since you are going to progress on story, pandemonium and those other game modes where her exclusive talent can be used better. Next one, we have Mage Taiga. Mage Taiga, in my opinion for early game, is a good pick to have because she is very versatile with area skills, single target skills, and a cross at area. This cross here you don't use, it's very bad. Not only that, uh, her exclusive talent is kinda useless, you don't want to use it, and she have a versatile climax that can be area or single target. So. This is where, where she shines at the start, because you can pick what you want for her, single target, area damage, and single uh, single target climax, or area climax, so kind of versatile, which is very good at the start of the game, since you don't have resources to build many characters. So you basically have a single target and area character with only one unit, which is 2 for 1 on value. Now for end game, uh, she used to be better, nowadays she's kinda outshined by some characters, but she is a very strong character to have on many teams because of her elemental and climax buff. 
the head said her climax cost from 10 to 8 on area and buffed the damage so it's very strong now easier to use because it's cheaper so it's a very solid pick for end game just not top tier meta next we have Tatsuya Tatsuya is controversial my opinion is that his skill point skills are terrible he, he have very bad skills so you don't want to use it his climax is kinda niche he is a single target that can be front on here so it gives you the option so sometimes it's kinda good to have on storage stages to nuke someone fast with a 8 climax point but where she, he shines is with his cross skills because they are very strong cross skills uh, his exclusive talent is kinda useless on early game because you cannot crit uh, with consistency so kinda useless as they start now for end game he is solid uh, his most use is his cross skill with milk because of milk support elemental that makes this probably the best for skill point skill in the game uh, you could crit so his talent is not useless anymore but his normal kit like loses all of his value because you are not in going to set his climax skill just spam milk's cross so kinda decent at the start of the game and he remains decent at the end game but changes wholly next we have Misaki just like Hikimona Suna, in my opinion she's one of the best characters that you can pick uh, her skills herself are not impressive a 0 skill point single target the standard and a 6 point divinity uh, divinity helps very well on the normal stages sorry stages be uh, because it's an easy way to get all 3 stars on the stage but where she shines the most is her exclusive talent that increases the damage of the entire team just at the price that she needs to attack so it's kinda easy to do it's a very strong exclusive talent she have some cross options mostly uh, she have a skill a front skill point with Toma if you want more damage from her because you are not doing much damage with her zero skill point so kind of kind of solid uh, to early game because Toma is farmable early and now and gain, getting damage buffs on everyone in your team is very strong now for end game she have her spots with her elementium that gives skill points to everyone climax points too not only that she gets damage boost to herself so she is a very good pick for end game too she kind of lost her position on the meta because of double buffing climax skills but still she's top tier for meta if you don't consider double buffing so in my opinion Misaki is also a good pick to to get just lower than Kimonasuna because Kimonasuna is a very balanced character next we have Alice Alice is also one of the other very good picks to get uh, she have mostly a area skill kit with a option of being a tank so you have the option but most of the time you are not going to use her shield skill she's a very consistent area character at the start of the game her talent is a damage boost to herself and her support characters so she can also use holo milk support those other characters for great use her cross skills uh, this one is a very strong single target skill but you don't want to use it because skeletal support is bad just pick milk support for her mm, this cross skill here you don't want to use because it means that Alice would be a support and want her to be a main DPS so for the start of the game very good pick she is a consistent area character with a very strong climax skill that is very hard for enemies to survive now for end game she is the best area climaxer in the game uh, is busted very strong you don't have a reason to ignore her for end game unless you can't spam her climax skill but even if you can't spam her climax skill she still have the best climax skill out in the game so what's the point of ignoring her she is very strong 
Now we have Kamineko. Kamineko is a support character with her own gimmick of using her teammate damage to give damage to the opponent. For early game, Kamineko, in my opinion, may be the worst character that you can get. Uh, her exclusive talent makes her kill herself with 10% HP to get climax point. And this is something that you don't benefit much on early game, so you're probably not going to use this. She has uh, tank stats, so don't expect damage from her cross skills, but she at least has a good option for her damage for you to combo into. And her own skills here are very low numbers on damage, this thing here hits less than a normal zero skill point area, and this is the best shield in the game, but that's outside the point. So for early game, in my opinion, Kamineko is a terrible character for you to get. Now for end game, it's another story. Her exclusive talent kinda is reliant on Ouroboros for you to get uh, something out of it, because you have too much skill, uh, climax point for how much you can use, but she stopped here for decrepit dream teams and enable some uh, BS that you can do with holo, battery skill and some uh, 6 skill point uh, skills for easy clear stages. But still, early game, don't use her, uh, she's bad for early game and very strong for end game on her own niches. Next we have Alice support. She is one of the best supports that you can get because of how her skills work, is a very strong buff for the climax skill of the front ally. She has very good stats, so can be used as a stat stick for a good main character that you have. Cross skills you cannot use because both are limited characters. She doesn't have exclusive talent because she is a support, so the value on her is her skill and her stats. And she stopped here on both. I don't value her more than other main characters that I say that are good picks, but she is a very good pick too because this is a very strong skill that can make you beat almost any stage without using your brain. Buff your front with her buff, just use the climax skill and see everything dying. So very good pick. But I would aim for a strong main like Monasuna first instead of going for Alice support. Next we have Eugeo. Mm, just like Kamineko, I think he's one of the worst picks that you can have. Like he have good stats, he's a support with high attack, but his skill is terrible. It was it would be decent if you didn't got Kojo support for non-limited characters. So if you didn't got Kojo support, his skill will not be that bad because it would be the better, the best uh, area frail that you can get in the game. But with Kojo sup in the game, he is basically useless on the skill use. He have an issue where he heals the the character, the main character that have him after climax, but that is kind of useless on normal gameplay. It's mostly for Kirito gimmick with Asuna dead. Uh, his cross skills is uh, with a limited character, so you cannot use it. So in my opinion, very bad pick for early game. Probably the worst, I think Kamineko have more value than him just because she is a main character. Now for end game, unless you have the Kirito gimmick of Climax Span, he is also useless. You don't want to invest on his stats because he's not farmable and his skill is terrible, his cross skill is terrible. So unless you can pull off the Kirito span with the Dasuna, you don't want Eugeo. Next we have Index. She has the same evaluation that I give to Alice support because they are basically the same character. They have good stats, good Psyche, uh, good cross skill, but this one is with limited only two, being Misaki, and their skill is also very strong. Same thing that I said for Alice serves for Index. So if you think Alice is a fine pick, 
then index is also a fine pick. And this is my opinion on all the characters that you can get. Just a, a shorter version, Kimonosuna is the best. Next we have Misaki and Alice. They, in my opinion, are the second best characters that you can get. Right after 10, I have Summer Aku. She is just below 10 a little because her main kit itself is kind of bad. So I value it to two more. After Summer Aku, we have Kirito and the Summer Girls with Kimono Shana, Summer Yukina, Mage Taiga, and Butterfly, I think. And after that, we have the Hess, where Eugeo is the worst character to get, and Kamineko is a tier on, the, on her own, because at the start she's bad, and at the end she's top tier, so it's how much you value Kamineko. But just get Kimonosuna and be happy, okay? So let's do my haul here, let's see if I get lucky. Uh, for consideration, I want to get Tenshi Yuki to get Awakens on here, but let's see. Uh, index, okay, that's not bad. Awaken 1. I don't think I'll get Awaken 3 on her, but yeah, it's not a bad pick. Could be worse, could get Bride. Uh, what I forget to talk about the banner itself is that what you can get is predefined here. You get one S character, so this will be limited as guaranteed, and one A character. Uh, I am not sure, but I think that you can get a limited character on this thing right here. I am not sure, I never saw anyone getting one, but I think you can get, it's very low chance, but I think you can. And B and C will be only normal characters. So before I end here, uh, I will be doing a video on Sinon, probably next week after people test her on single target decrepit dream, since she is a single target character, but from what I hid from here, Unless you go to Awaken 5, she's kinda bad, like, she needs an Awaken 1 to be a decent support character, even if she have DPS stats, because she generates uh, 2 climax skills after every action. She needs at least Awaken 3 to be able to spend her climax skill, so kinda like Tenshi, the problem is that her climax skill is very weak if she is not Awakened 5. And that Awakened 5, I think she is worse than the Taiga, maybe, for spamming climax. So, I don't think, besides collection, like I got her here for my collection, I don't think that you should get, uh, you know, unless you like her art, because her skills animation and her art is, are very beautiful. But that's it, people. Get Kimonosuna on your rolls, okay? Good luck. Goodbye.